Hey guys, Joe here, and in today's video, we are taking a look at the Beretta M9A3. As I promised from Instagram, go sign up there if you aren't. Also, this will be a one take because even though the Google Pixel 3a supposedly fixed its issue with its variable frame rate, I don't want to risk this not being editable. So I'm going to film this one this way. I'm going to film all the rest and edit it together. So get subscribed. I have five more videos I'm filming just this morning. So those will be coming out in short order. This is the former U.S. military sidearm M9A3 variant. It was the final version of that gun. Uh, it was originally introduced in 1983 and recently retired in favor of the Sig Sauer M17 and M18. The M17 is a full-length slide. The M18 is a shorter one. I've taken a look at both of those guns on this channel. Before we get going, let's go ahead and open her up. Large ejection port. You can see clearly nothing in there. Nothing in there. The magazine is not near the gun, so we can go ahead and close the slide on it. These are a beautiful pistol, and Beretta has been around probably, I think, longer than any other firearm or actually weapons manufacturer that I can think of, period. They've been around for 500 years, so they know what they're doing. I think they were like the guys that supplied David his rocks when he fought Goliath. Let's take a look at the box. It comes in a cardboard box which is this one here that I'm stalling for so I can bend over and pick it up. So that's what you get when you order it. Just a nice little box for storing things in, such as the ammo crate that the gun itself comes in. Not everybody will use this because they sometimes will put their firearms in a safe. They have changed the box a little bit from previous versions. It's a little bit darker in color. That could just be a manufacturing thing. But they've also taken a few things out of the box. So opening up this box, you'll see that it has two spare magazines. So it comes with a total of three now. It used to come with four. It also used to have a couple of extra cutouts for ear protection and something else. I can't remember 100%. But inside the box, you do get a branded Beretta gun lock as well as a secondary grip, which is more like one of the Packmire wraparounds. And it actually gives you back a feature that they took off of the M9A3 that was present on all Berettas up until this point. And that is the back strap is now flat on the M9A3. Now, if I only had a 1911 here so I can compare them. Oh, wait, there's one. This one is a Kimber Warrior 1911. We'll be taking a look at it in a future video, but for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and make sure that it's empty. Yep, we're good. So we can compare the back straps. As you can see, it now has a rear angle that is very similar to the 1911 because the Beretta replaced the 1911, and a lot of people preferred the flat rear main spring housing of the 1911 or the back strap now as it is since it's no longer a rear spring main housing main spring housing like it is in here. There's a spring that runs up the entire spine of the 1911s. This has a threaded barrel for a suppressor, has night sights with a very easy to pick up picture, which I really like. And they're not super tall sights, which is very nice to have. Some suppressor ready firearms have really tall sights on them. Luckily, this one is not one of them. It has an ambidextrous safety decocker mechanism, but that is the only thing that's ambi on these guns. It has a standard slide lock slide release on this side and the mag release. It is an extended mag release. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a lip on there, a little bit of an extra button, and it works very well. Alloy frame steel slide with very nice magazines. They have that PVD coating, which makes them slicker, as you can see, completely drop free. The safety decocker does two functions. Number one, obviously, you can lock the gun into a safe mode so that you can carry it that way. However, being a double action pistol, you can carry it with the hammer down and still pull the gun out and just start shooting it. In order to do that, you can see here that when you lower the decocker lever, it actually blocks the firing pin so that you can safely drop the hammer without it touching the firing pin. Then you can go back into live fire mode or you can leave it in safe. But if you're going to carry it, loaded you should leave it hammer down in fire because then you can just grab the gun and some people say oh no you should always use a safety if it has it i don't really buy that especially because of the way this gun works and the fact that in double action it has a very very heavy trigger being a double action it 
cocks the hammer every time you pull the trigger to fire. So you have about a 10 pound trigger. It's probably closer to nine pounds in this one, but it's extremely smooth. It's just straight pull through and then just goes. The reset in double action is pretty much all the way out. And then it just goes right back in. If the gun is say cocked, you'll see that the trigger is in a much more rearward position with very little take up and no pressure required to get there. That is single action mode. So when you do that, the trigger is much lighter because the hammer is already cocked and the trigger feel is much shorter. So it's just, and then the reset, assuming that you have another round that went in and the hammer resets is right there. So you get much shorter shots, much lighter shots, more precise control over it if you run it in that mode. It's up to you which way you do it. Obviously, you can't start in single action unless the hammer is back because the minute you put the hammer back down, it goes into double action mode. It has a 1913 Picatinny rail on it so you can mount your lights, your lasers, your 90 degree angled scope off your kel Sub 2000, uh, whatever you want to put on there. That's kind of a joke, guys. So completely flat front to the trigger guard. They used to have a little bit of a hook down here originally so that you could grab it and put your fingers like that, and then it would hold onto your finger. No longer has checkering on the front of this. They used to have, uh, not checkering, but they used to have some horizontal lines that would allow you to get a little bit better grip when you had gloved hands, but since it's a pick rail, they prefer you put a laser on that. Has some checkering on the front of the strap. Uh, you can see it's checkered up here and then straight lines down here. Gives you a really nice grip. I always say that you should have a, a cross pattern or a hatch pattern or some sort of other than just vertical pattern because it makes it a lot easier to grip. I like that. It gives you a nice full grip. It has a natural curve to the trigger guard, which brings your fingers up higher into the trigger guard area so you can get all your fingers on the gun itself. Integrated beaver tail, as you can see, it allows me to get up nice and high on the back of the gun without having to fear hammer bite or slide bite because I don't have big meaty hands, aka fat hands. The grips are very small. They went with a very thin grip to keep the width of the gun down because these are 17 plus one firearms. They do sell extended base pads so you can get like I believe a 19 plus one or even a 21 plus one. These will work in any Beretta. Sorry, lost my train of thought there for a second, and I'm not restarting nine minutes into a one-take video. <laughs> the finish is very durable. I've seen people have these for years, and as long as you maintain them properly, they should keep their finish for a very long time. One of the best things about the Beretta M9A3, or just the Beretta FS line in general, is how easy they are to maintain and take down. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword because when you have a huge open top like this, it does allow dirt and debris to get in, especially when you have a rolling block system like this does where you can actually see the mechanism when you pull the trigger or when we take the top off. And you can see that when you activate it, that's what actually moves. But historically, it's been really reliable. So just make sure that you're not putting mud or cement down there and you're good to go. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and pop the top off. I'm going to... Safety check it again. Check. Check. Doesn't matter how many times you've done it. Takes one second to open the slide. Make sure you don't have a round in there. And then you can make yourself safe. You don't have to worry about dropping the hammer. You can leave it in the rearward position if you want. All you need to do, and you've seen it in Lethal Weapon, is you just hit this button here while dragging down the disassembly notch or takedown lever. And boom, it literally comes off. You don't have to pull the trigger. You don't have to do anything. And inside of the slide, you have a non-captive recoil spring. So uh, earlier when I filmed this, it launched clear across the room. So make sure you pay attention to that. It is not a captive recoil spring. No big deal. Just be careful. And then you have your barrel, which is held in place via this uh, functional uh, breech lock system. It's not a breech lock system. You know what I mean. It's a rolling block system. So as you can see, when it's in the up position which it normally is unless you accidentally do what I just did, which is, there you go. Move the uh, pin out and then it locks the block in the wrong position. But with a rolling block or a dropping block, 
the barrel actually stays in one line and this is the part that actually moves in order to make the firearm function. I'll show you on the gun right quick. So when the barrel is in its forward position, you can see that the block is in the up position. It's not going to go quite that far. So that the slide does not have a continuous rail to go on, it's actually stopped because the slide is interacting with these tabs up top. But when you fire the gun, the barrel comes back first, which drops down and completes the slide or the slide rails, and then the gun comes back. Slide can cycle all the way, but the barrel stays in a straight line during its entire functionality. Except for, you know, when you do that wrong. There we go. That aids in accuracy because you don't have to worry about the barrel tilting and then coming back down. So you get a little bit less muzzle flip. If you're still firing a bullet, so you're going to get some rise out of it. But it supposedly will come back down a lot quicker too. As you can see, the finish is very nice on it with a nice ramped barrel, so hollow points should feed just fine into it. The slide itself is finished inside and out in the same color. It's a very smooth pistol the way it is, so I wouldn't feel the need to take the material off. However, if this was my personal pistol, I probably would take the finish off just to make sure that it was nice and smooth and ran flawlessly, but that's just the way I am. I see something that could be done, and I usually do it. Taking a look at the frame, as you can see, it's just on Beretta. <laughs> trigger bar on this side, when you pull the trigger, it comes back here, pushes up on the drop safety, and then it can also release the hammer to go home. You have your uh, ejector, and on this side you have your multitude of components for both the trigger and the safeties. Being an alloy frame, it's very light, and it looks like it's finished extremely well. Again, you can see there's really no machine markings in there. Yeah, nothing too extravagant in that gun. It's not, you know, a super high-end court or anything like that, but it was designed to be easily serviceable and field strippable, and Beretta accomplished it. That's why they were our military firearm. The cool thing about the Beretta is even though the frame is different, you can actually interchange a lot of the parts. So you could put an M9A1 slide, barrel, everything together and put it on that frame or vice versa and the gun would function just fine. Kind of like the old 1911 military adage, they used to test them by taking apart a bunch of guns, putting all the parts in a bucket and then reassembling all the guns from the various miscellaneous parts. And that was one requirement back when the 1911 was adopted that you can easily repair the firearm in the field. So with those parts taken out, you're completely field stripped. And I think you can see it's very easy. You can get in there, you can lube everything, you can clean everything. This one being a brand new gun, Liberty Arms, Google it, Harrisonburg, Virginia. You can pick one of these up and uh, yeah, Let's go ahead and put it back together because, again, I lost my train of thought and 15 minutes in, still not redoing my dang video. One thing you have to pay attention to is, well, number one, it's very easy to get that in the wrong position. So you have to be careful when you do that to make sure that you get the block back in the right spot. And, of course, because I'm trying to film this, it's not going to allow me to go. Pause, please. Sorry, a little bit of percussive, percussive maintenance to get it back in place. You need to have this in the right position, otherwise the gun will not go back together correctly. So make sure that you have it like this. When you insert it into the slide, it will naturally find its position when you push the slide back. You will see that the block will go into these rails up here. Put your spring and your guide rod back in. Be careful, these are very tight. And again, I've launched these just as many times as I've launched 1911 parts. I'm gonna do it off camera because I need to put a little bit more pressure on it than I can at the angle I was just at. Okay, as you can see, it needs to go on nice and flat. There you go. You gotta love these live film videos or one takes because I leave in all my mistakes. Next thing you do is take your firearm, make sure the takedown lever is still in the down position, line up your rails with the slide, and go ahead and start it back. Very easy to put back together, just grab it, do that, flick your takedown into place, and gun is back in function. I like Berettas. 
I've had a PT-92. I haven't owned a Beretta yet myself. Originally, when I first started looking at them, I didn't care for the slide-mounted decocker. I thought it was kind of dumb. And uh, I've taken that back. I actually think they're pretty convenient to have. And actually a little bit less obtrusive than the PT-92's 1911 style. Because without there being something for me to ride my thumb on, I don't ride the safety or the slide lock as much. So that's a little bit more convenient. But again, personal preference as a personal shooter. If you want to get one of these guns, again, they have two of them in stock at the store right now. With gun supplies being as limited as they are, I honestly don't know what they're going to have at any given moment. Because distributors really aren't putting anything on their websites. They're just calling up their uh, accounts that they have and saying, here, I've got these. Do you want them? And pretty much everybody's taking whatever's offered. So get a hold of them if you want to get one of these. Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Just Google it. You can just look it up on the interwebs. If I put it in the description, it gets instantly demonetized and then nobody will ever see these videos. So let me know down below if you own one, if you've taken it out 